into the thick of it with this refit and we're still yet to see any sign of dry season or heaven forbid temperatures under 90 degrees F. With all boats the structure is the most important thing to keep in good condition and this week after digging through some cabinets and cables I find something from the collision that looks horrendous. Unfortunately found something pretty ugly. We also run through some updates with you about certain areas of the vessel and how they're going. Big mess at the moment. It's a big, big mess. With so much time on the hard, it will make splashing for the first time that much better next year. Is that so good? Ah! This week, we are just going to let you know what's going on. What are we up to? It's um, a big, big mess at the moment. It's a big, it? big mess. Absolutely. We are touching things and fiddling here and there and all crooks and crannies on the boat. So we're going to show you that. Let's do it. A very exciting update, I think, is that we have taken out the couch and mattress covers and we've handed those in to a man called Harry at Dr. Dr. Sofa. Dr. Dr. Sofa. Sofa. It's going to be a huge transformation. Little tees, white couches, white, fake leather couches. Our man, Mr. Scraper, he just started work again, so apologize for that. So yeah, white couches. We also handed in the curtains to the same guy, same place. We're going to have white curtains, very beautiful cotton curtains. So it's going to be very exciting to see the finished product. Another thing that I am tackling is the mold in the boat. So I've been cleaning out the cupboards using vinegar and two essential oils that just will kill the mold. So it smells really good in here right now actually. Um, hopefully the mold will be gone. So while we're down here we'll show you we've got this cover off the roof. Um, that's because the boys are doing repair jobs on top with the fiberglass and hopefully soon the gel coat. So just here you can see the bottom of one of the big protrusions when the mast came down and made lots of dints in the deck. So back on the steering cables for the uh, actual rudder stock, I'm actually got in contact with the company that makes these cables and we're looking at possibly replacing them at the moment. We're hoping to come to some arrangement where they have a new system that will fit our old boat. I have tried my best to remove them and repair them but these cable support systems are extremely broken and it's becoming more and more likely that we have to replace the whole steering cable system including the actual, they call it a rake and pinion I, I think, don't quote me on it but uh, it's looking like a big job and I want to do it right I want to go to sea and have this steering system perfect because I do not want any problems with this when we get out there on the ocean. So standing on the deck we have all of the holes that used to be on the top here. They've now been covered and sealed with fiberglass, quite a few layers actually. The guys here in Pencor Marina have done an excellent job with repairing these. I'm interested to see how the gel coat goes on top, if, if that's a thing they do or I've got to do it, I'm not sure but uh, they're looking incredible and they're also not leaking any water into the boat anymore which is quite nice. Big plus. Big plus. So this morning I am trying to take uh, this cabinet behind me off. Uh, basically I want to inspect the bulkheads and the stringers. I want to do that from inside. I can see the damage outside but I just want to double check that everything's a-okay -A inside. If it's not we can repair it but it's really important that we check this now and we get it 100% before we go to the ocean. We do not want broken bulkheads, broken stringers. These things are very structural and uh, it's just about getting into it and seeing if anything's broken.
All right, so the reason we're here is to inspect kind of the structure and I have unfortunately found something pretty ugly. So have a look at this. So here you can see good bulkhead, good bulkhead, good bulkhead. But as soon as you come up here, you see this huge, huge crack. And that is really bad. On both sides of the bulkhead, it was very obvious to see the broken fiberglass. After talking to our fiberglasser, it was clear that this problem was an easy fix. It's really good to be able to see this all finally because I knew there was a leak there and I knew we were going to do repairs, but to actually visualize everything now, it's really important moving forward and it makes me feel like, yeah, just more secure in this future vessel we're trying to get back intact. This morning, Isabel and I pulled out the oven out of its little home, and we have two burners of the three that are not working. The oven is not working, the grill is not working. Basically, what is happening with each is they will ignite, but when you take your hand off the igniter, it goes out. So there's, I did a little bit of YouTubing, and I believe it's called a thermocoupling that is unfortunately not working. So I'm going to start taking it apart myself, never done this before as always, and just uh, see if I can find this thermocoupling and then we can order in a replacement and get this bad boy working 100%. These are around 1400 to 2000 US dollars new, so we don't want to go buy a new one. <laughs> we rather just fix the one that we have. So I'm about to do that right now. It was so hot, I decided to uh, move the aircon out into the living room. <laughs> Works a lot better. Diving into this now, I was hoping it'd be simple, but it's really not. I'm taking it quite apart, unfortunately. So after a lot of hard work yesterday, I forgot to film an ending, so just catching up now. Uh, I managed to get all the thermocouplings working perfectly. The oven is also working perfectly with the grill. I'm very happy. Uh, should keep Isabel even more happy as we go to sea and we start cooking. Basically, the thermocouples were not positioned right, I believe. I just took them out and I cleaned them quite well and then put them back, installed them in the perfect position and they are working now, which is amazing. When it came to the job of re-anti-fouling, I was planning to do the usual light sand and reapply new paint. But after inspecting the previous two coats closely, I found the coats to be very flaky. I decided it would be best to remove the old anti-foul and start again. This process requires a scraper with a tungsten tip and some elbow grease to scrape all the old anti-foul away. Not the easiest job to do when you could cook an egg in the sun in this Malaysian heat. Good morning! 
You can see here, this is uh, what the uh, bottom of the boat looks like after I've scraped. And uh, it's not um, it's not how I want it to look. I want it to, I want it to just be barrier coat. There's all these little black marks everywhere. And basically I've got my polisher slash sander out this morning. I'm gonna work all these little black marks out and all this little anti-fail which I can't scrape away. And I'm hoping to have a beautiful looking barrier coat after I'm done. So let's get stuck into this now. Alright, so I am currently taking off the coupling. Uh, the coupling is still left on the C drive and when I bring in the engine and the gearbox attached to the engine, I will need to line up the gearbox shaft with the C drive shaft. To do that, I will need a metal machine tool which will line it up specifically perfect, but to have a machine tool to line those two things up, I need to take off the coupling. It's a bit confusing. I'll show you later on. It's not really important, but all you need to know is I'm getting this coupling off. So you can see here, this is the coupling and these are my gear pullers. And I'm just gonna wind this on. Hopefully it pops it straight off. <laughs> So this here is the coupling, so you can see this shaft here, so we're pulling this coupling off this shaft. Okay, so now I've pulled it pretty much the whole way off the shaft and I've already loosened it up so I know it's going to come off, but basically there it is. That's the coupling. So put that down there. And so this shaft, I need it clean so the lining up tool comes over the top of it and basically I can line up the engine and gearbox with this C drive shaft. So there is something very interesting that has happened yesterday. We had the welders come around and they have actually completed the railing around the side of the boat. So happy with how it turned out. I was uh, a little bit afraid of it might not turn out as I pictured, but um, I have to say that, oh, it looks so good. It looks so good. So when it comes to these amels, normally there is a quite an elaborate structure on the forward bow. Um, there's a seat involved and there's lots of uh, stainless steel railing going everywhere. And I had something similar on the last boat, but I didn't really like it that much. Where this boat, I wanted to change it up a bit and having the railing destroyed gave me a chance to design something myself and, and design something that I really wanted and liked. And so while you're sailing around the world, oftentimes you need to get access to your anchor and you need to get access all around the bow. And when you have these railings in front of you and all around you, and you've got to feed ropes here, there and everywhere, it becomes a bit annoying. So I have made my railing stop quite short of the very end of the bow. And you can see this right here. It is just amazing, I think, I personally think maybe some a Mel yacht owners might not agree. <laughs> it's not really original how the boat was, but it's what I really like and it's what I prefer. So uh, I hope 
that you guys can see this and, and understand my uh, my take on it. So as I said, if I want to walk around here and pick up the anchor or move it around or I just want to jump off into the ocean straight off the bow, this having no railing here is just perfect. It's exactly what I want. 